Hello, in this lecture we will take a look at a comprehensive problem. We'll be working the first part of the comprehensive problem. It's broken out into these sections. We will be doing the journal entries for a month. We're going to then do the adjusting process, then we'll do the financial statements, and then we'll do the closing process. The type of company is a service company, so we will not be dealing with inventory at this time, and we'll go through the accounting cycle for a service company in this way. We're going to have the data on the left-hand side of each tab. We'll enter that data into the blue areas is where we want to indication of where the data should be implemented. And then we have our trial balance over here. And the trial balance will be formatted in order. The green accounts are going to be assets. And then we have liabilities. Then we have equity. And then we have income and expenses. It's always going to be in that order. With It is also reflected up here in the accounting equation. So you can see the green are added up that's the assets and then the liabilities are added to the liabilities and the owner's equity is added up in the blue that is the owner's equity and of course the assets equal the liabilities plus the owner's equity if it's green that means we're doing good if we have a green uh, zero down here that means we're doing good good being that we are in balance why are we in balance well in this trial balance we're representing debits with basically positive numbers or non bracketed numbers and credits with bracketed numbers so we don't have the T account in the trial balance, but we still have the balancing concept in that we can see that the debits minus the credits are zero. Therefore, the debits equal the credits. And by doing this, we can kind of allow ourselves to have less columns in some of the worksheets. So this is a common practice to do many times. So uh, it is good to take a look at and get used to seeing debits and credits in a few different formats. Over here, of course, we will have the debits and credits on a debit column and a credit column, but I will be representing the credits with brackets in the entire worksheet and see how that works. We then have the general ledger over here, and the general ledger is this long, kind of intimidating looking uh, item of ledgers, but it's basically just the backup for the accounts on the trial balance. So we've got the same list of accounts, same order, the assets. Be, and then the liabilities, then the equity. So we've got cash, then accounts receivable, then supplies, then prepaid rent, then prepaid insurance, office equipment, accumulated depreciation, and then we're into the liabilities, accounts payable, salaries payable, unearned fees, and then we're going into the equity, owner's equity draws, and then we're in the income statement revenue, and then all the expenses list out, listed out in this way. So what we're going to do, of course, is post the journal entries here. And we're going to record the journal entries here. Then we will post them to the general ledger. That will automatically post to the trial balance. We're going to do a, a lot of entries, a lot of repetitions. So this will become uh, familiar as we go. First thing I want to do is actually hide some cells. So we're going to learn some Excel as we go through this process as well. And basically, I want to put my information into these cells here. And I would like to hide these cells just so they're out of the way and we don't have to see them and deal with them. In order to do that, I'm going to put my cursor right on the F here so you can see the drop down click so the whole column is highlighted. And then I'm holding down the left click and I'm going to drag until I get to column J. I'm letting go of the left click. And then I'm going to right click in the selected area and go down to hide. So we'll hide that selected area so that now we can see the journal trees we're going to work in, the space we're going to put it, and the trial balance all in one area. All right, so the first uh, date is 5-3, so I'm going to put that in the date area. And it, sees, it says we received cash from clients for advanced payment for services that will be prepared in the future. Record as unearned revenue. So first thing I'll always ask through these, is cash affected? So is cash affected? Because if it is, it's the easiest account that we will get to know because cash is going to be affected more often than most other accounts. In this case, it says, yeah, cash is affected. Cash is right here. It says we received cash, therefore cash must be going up. So the question is, how do we make something go up? Well, the way I'm going to go through this list of questions, and I'm going to go through this list of questions in order to avoid some common pitfalls. So I do suggest going through this kind of list of questions so that you avoid some common mistakes that will happen. And that will be, well, is, this, is cash a debit or credit balance? It's a debit. How do we know? Because it does not have brackets around it, unlike the credits that have brackets around it. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is. So this is a debit. We need to do the same thing to it, which would be another debit in this case. So I'm going to copy this by right-clicking the cash and copy it. I'm going to put the debit on top. So here's my date. I'm going to put the debit on top. Why? 
just tradition it goes on top debits go on top so i'm going to right click and i'm going to paste it one two three just the values only if i paste it this way then i change the format of the cell i just want to paint the value values now you could just type it in there obviously as well so if you um you know if you just typed in cash that works as well but uh, copy and paste it might be easier as we go later on i'm in the debit column the debit side and we're going to put the four thousand there and I'm just typing the 4,000 and note that I'm not putting a comma or anything. I'm just typing 4,000. I'm in the cell instead of on the cell. And then we got to hit enter or something in order to be off the cell. So I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see that uh, I'm not in the cell. Now I'm on the cell. We're, if we debit something, then we're also going to have to credit something. So I'm going to represent credits on this worksheet with a negative. So I'm going to put a negative 4,000. Now credits don't mean negative, they're not bad. Negative not, is not a negative term in this case. <laughs> negative is just how the credits are gonna be represented in the worksheets so that we can use Excel in formulas to help us do some calculations. Note when we hit enter now, it's gonna change that negative sign to brackets. That's the formatting of the cell that is doing that. The worksheet is formatted to do that. If you wanna know where that formatting is, it's, it's in this section here in the formatting section. You can also right click on the uh, item Go to format cells and if you go to the number section then uh, you can see the different types of formats and of course we are in this bracketed format rather than having the negative sign all right so now we just need to know what that other account will be and you would think that if we did work that we would record the other side usually being revenue but in this case in this case it says that we have not yet done the work so therefore we haven't yet earned the revenue so the credit is actually going to have to go to a liability account, in this case being unearned revenue. And unearned revenue, we can see right here, has a credit balance represented by the fact that it has brackets around it. We already know that we're going to credit it because we had to debit cash. If we credit a credit balance account, we'll be doing the same thing to it, which will make it go up. So if we credit this account, it will make it go up. That makes sense because uh, unearned revenue represents something that we owe in the future for something that happened in the past. What happened in the past? What happened right now? We got money. What do we owe in the future? Our service. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. I'm going to right click and copy. I'm going to go over to uh, C6, right click and paste it. One, two, three. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and post this. Now we're going to have to post this to the general ledger over here. So we got to find these two accounts on the general ledger. So here's cash, for example, and we see the debit and the credit side. We see that we debited cash. So I'm going to go over here in cell O. There's O9. And I'm going to say equals. And I do highly recommend putting formulas instead of just typing the number in here. Because if you do, then if you're, there's a mistake, it's a lot easier to go back and find that mistake. So I'm going to say equals. I'm going to point to that 4,000. When we hit enter, the debit's going to go up from 22.1 to enter 26.1. And we'll see we're out of balance here now. We're out of balance here now by 4,000. That 4,000 being the credit here so we're gonna have to find unearned revenue we could make this the whole sheet a little bit smaller here if we went down to the taskbar if we want to see it smaller uh it's about as small as i want to go but if we go down to there we can see a few more of these general ledger accounts in the same screen and so if i go down here to unearned revenue i want to be in the credit side in this case and uh we're not going to put any negative signs over here all we need is an equal sign and then point to this balance in e6 and then if I go back over here, and when I hit enter, it's going to go up in the credit direction. So notice it went up. Excel sees it going up in a negative direction, but we see it as going up in a credit direction because we're dealing with debits and credits in this case. That, of course, puts us back in balance. We can see that 6.5 here is also the 6.5 there. We can see that the zero is back in balance here, and our equation is back in balance up here as well. So let's go back over here. I'm going to make this a little bit larger once again and go to the second item which is going to be on five five and it says receive cash from clients for work done in the past and recorded as accounts receivable so the first question i'm always going to ask is cash affected and, and once again it says received cash therefore cash is affected then we need to have cash go up because we received it therefore cash must be going up we ask how do we make cash go up well cash has a debit balance by the fact that it does not have brackets around it the way to make something go up is to do the same thing to it, which in this case happens to be another debit. So I'm going to right click on that, I'm going to copy it, I'm going to put my cursor over here in C8, it's C8, and I'm going to right click, I'm going to paste it 1, 2, 3, that's just the values only when we paste it to values only like so. Then we'll put the 3, 1 on top in the debit column, 
And then in the credit column, if there's only two accounts affected, we have to have an equal number of debits and credits. So we're going to put the same negative. I'm going to represent with a negative 3100. And once again, when we hit enter, then it'll put those brackets around. So I'm going to hit enter. And because of the format of the cell, it put bracket around it. Now, if you wanted to change that cell, then you'd have to go in there and double click on it. Or you can go in there and you can go up to the formula bar up here. So this is actually what we typed in the formula bar. This is what has actually been formatted. So if you're inside the cell, just realize that you're inside the cell and it's going to act differently than if you're just on the cell. All right. So then what's going to be the credit? Uh, receive cash from clients for work done in the past. So once again, we might think, well, we did work. We should credit revenue. But the revenue was done in the past and we already received uh we've, we've already done the work and recorded the revenue therefore when we did the work we recorded the revenue in accounts receivable up here so this is where the work should uh be coming out of this represents money that is owed to us at 3400 it has now been paid to us therefore this 3400 needs to go down in this case and how do we make something go down we do the opposite thing to it as what it is this is a debit making it go down would be necessary to have a credit. We already knew that because we debited cash. So there's the credit. This is the account that we will credit, which will reduce the receivable. Receivable will go down, which is an asset. It's a good thing. People owe us money, but we would rather have the cash. Receivable is going to go down and the better asset of cash will go up. Going to right click, going to copy that, going to go to cell C9, right click and paste it one, two, three, just the values only. Then we're going to go ahead and post that. So I'm going to scroll over to the general ledger. I'm going to go over enough so we see more of the general ledger. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller in the taskbar down here. And then we'll go to the cache here. So we're going to post this cache line to the general ledger to the cache section. And it's on the debit side. So I'm in cell 010, cell 010. And I'm going to just say equals and then point to that 31. And I do recommend using the formulas here and then saying enter cash goes from 26 one up to 29 two that puts us out of balance because that 29 two also carries over to the trial balance now we need to record the other side we're out of balance by the 3001 that's going to go to accounts receivable on the general ledger this is called posting so here's the accounts receivable it's a credit so we're going to go on the credit side we're going to say equals and point out to this 3001 and that 3-4 should go down by the 3-1-2, in this case, 300. That then 300 is back on our trial balance. That's where this number is coming from. Notice you got these handy little tabs up here. You can see, well, that number is coming from there. That's one of the reasons formulas are handy. Uh, if you want to know where these tabs are, they're in the data group. And uh, no, they're in the formulas tab. And then they're in the formatting auditing group. And there are these two icons here. So I like to put those in the quick task bar by right clicking and putting them in to uh, the quick add to the quick toolbar. So there we have that and we're back in balance. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger again down here and take a look at the uh, next transaction, which will be on five nine. So we paid cash for miscellaneous expense. All right. So miscellaneous expense. So the question is, once again, is cash affected? And it is. We paid cash. So in this case, we paid cash. Cash must then be going down in this case. So how do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it. Cash is a debit balance represented by the fact that it does not have brackets around it. Therefore, the opposite of a debit is a credit. So to make it go down, we're going to credit cash. I'm going to right click on cash, copy it. I'm going to put it on the bottom. So here's the date. I'm going to put it on the bottom. Why? Because credits just traditionally go on the bottom. We could... Um, uh, have an exception to that rule. It doesn't really matter as long as it's in the right column. But, you know, if it's an easy thing for us to uh, have that convention of debits on top, credits on the bottom, we will adhere to it. Uh, if, on the other hand, there's a reason for us not to follow that convention, then I will break with that convention if uh, it makes the journal entry easier to read. So we're going to put the credit represented by a negative 400. And then I'm going to say enter. So now we're off the cell and we see the brackets around it. If we credit something, we're also going to have to have a debit of some kind because every journal entry has to have the same amount of debits and credits. So we're going to have a 400 on top as well in the debit section. So we have the debit and the credit. The only question being, what will that debit be? 
So pay cash for miscellaneous expense. So, uh,